What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. In the last episode we sailed through the fog to get to the Isle of Gus, then we solved the puzzle and opened up the way to the second temple. So in this episode, what do you say we head inside and take on the Temple of Wind? We're finally inside, Link. Looks like we won't escape sudden gusts inside the temple either. Be careful. Right, so obviously the gimmick of this temple is the fact that there are these gush jars pretty much everywhere and blowing wind leading into endless pits, so be kind of careful. Uh, for our first puzzle though, what we need to do is grab this bomb and not toss it into the endless pit. Instead, what we're supposed to do is grab the bomb and toss it over to the other side. Guess I wasn't like close enough to the edge there for whatever reason. Honestly though, like I don't like to stand close to the edges in this game because since everything is controlled with the touchscreen, you can very easily like make a bad movement or have the game interpret one of your movements incorrectly and end up like running straight into the pit. Trust me, it happens more than you would imagine. Anyways, yeah, just push that block in front of that first jar, then hit the switch and you'll be able to make it across there. No problemo. Um, this temple is very, very simple. Like... All of the puzzles are very straightforward, so I'm probably not going to spend too much time explaining things because, honestly, it would probably take me more time to explain what I'm doing rather than just, like, doing it. But yeah, stubbing on that switch will actually create a shortcut back to the beginning of this temple, and, um, there are a lot of shortcuts in this temple. Most of them are not really, you know, useful, but there are a lot of them, and I have no idea how I even, like, ended up going into that pit there, but that's exactly what I mean. Like, see, I think maybe... It thought I wanted to do two jump attacks and just like jettisoned me into the pit, but um, I kind of just wanted to walk towards the other bat, so yeah, it's sort of another reason why I don't particularly like the controls of this game, but they're not like too bad to the point of crippling because I only took like one heart of damage, so it's not really that big of a deal. Anyways, now that all those snakes are gone, both of these doors have opened up, and uh, we should be able to move on to the next section of this temple and uh, we're coming up on a very significant room and you'll see what I mean in a second so let's just push this block forward and uh, let me get rid of all these snakes you don't really have to but um they're just kind of in my way so I'd rather get rid of them right now this room's important though because right up here guess what that is the boss lock and right over here is the chest that contains the boss key. They're so close, but we can't get them just yet. There's still an entire temple to go through, so let's start making some more progress by pushing this gush jar into position. Basically, we want to put this on one of these weird-looking tiles, and uh, now that it's in position, let's just run into the wind and jump across that gap. We can also step on the switch, which will again open this door, creating a shortcut back to the beginning of the temple that we will probably never use. Like, in theory, I love the idea of having shortcuts in temples, but um, because the temples in Phantom Hourglass are already so short, they never really get used. Like, if they were in a game like, I don't know, Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword, you know, with really long temples, I could see it being immensely helpful, but um, in this game, not so much. Anyways, though, yeah, those were some new enemies. Uh, they hide inside the rocks. You can actually see, like, the skulls on your map, so just get close to the rock to wake them up, then chuck a bomb at their face. That way they turn back into normal chews, and then kill them with your sword. Fairly simple enemies, but they are kind of cool. Um, now, this area we will be coming back to a lot, so get familiar with the layout. First things first, though, let's check out this rock. When two wings flutter, the door will swing wide. Alright, so what that means is, um, you see those little, like, wind turbines right above me? We need to activate those using the gush jars that are up there, because obviously they're not blowing into the turbines. If we step on this switch, it'll actually unlock the door on the sort of bottom right section of this map. And that's important, because this will sort of lead us into the rest of the temple. But before we do that, let's head over here, because there is a chest... And uh, if we open this up, we can get ourselves a Goron Amber. Now, I think this is another random chest, so what you get might be a little bit different. Anyway, speaking of treasure, if we jump into these wind currents without doing anything, they will carry us all the way across to the other side where this chest is, and we can open this up for a Courage Gem. Sweet! That's not all those wind currents are going to be used for, so 
let's just go back around one more time and this time if we jump down not into the currents we can move this block and we want to move this on the third wind current that way you know we can block it and now if we jump into them they will carry us and drop us on top of this block which will allow us to reach this staircase and now go even further into the temple and this is where things start to get more fun um we will be backtracking to this room quite a bit as well and yeah unfortunately there are these annoying sand snakes in this room as well so just either like try and run past them or sneak past them uh let's check out this stone as well respect silence and tread quietly or else you'll rouse the slumberer yeah we already know about that uh let's check this map when all the pillars of wind rise the door will open all right so there are four x's marked here uh let's just mark them down on our map as well you do not need to be too precise with this like you will know uh the spot that they want you to dig up with your shovel when you get close to it so uh that should be fine all right so let's just start and grab the two x's over here and try and be kind of quiet while doing so really don't want to deal with the stupid sand snakes and gosh dang it yeah sometimes when you go to like dig it up if you take an extra step forward they will attack you uh, right up here is a cracked wall. We can't really do anything with this right now. Just remember that for later on. What we can do is open up this chest and get ourselves a power gem. Nice. Alright, so now that we got that, um, let's just try and get the X that is down here. And we'll just dig this up. So there we go. Another wind current. Two down, only two to go. And please do not drag me all over the place and get away from me, sand snake. I don't want to deal with you, my man. All right, there should be one right over here, so let's just creep up on it, and um, let me go over here and try and dig from this angle that way. Yeah, there we go, perfect. No sand snakes have been attracted, and now there's just one more that we need to get, and uh, it is right to the right of sort of the exit of this room, so let's just approach it very, very quietly because we're going to make a swift escape as soon as we dig this up, so... Bam, there we go, last wind current, and by letting all four of those torches, the doors will unlock. There is one in the bottom left, and of course one like slightly to the left of where I'm at now, and um, doesn't matter which one you go in first, you will have to go through both of them, so I just chose this one because yeah, obviously I did not want to get attacked by the stupid sand snakes, but let's just blow up these two rocks and go right upstairs. And now guess what? This brings us into the room uh, with those two gust jars. So now we have the opportunity to push one of them into place and that's exactly what we're going to do. But of course now we need to go and get the other one in place and that's sort of why I said you're going to be backtracking to these two rooms a lot. So remember that second exit that opened up when we lit all four of those torches? Well, if we go through there, that'll actually lead us to where the second gust jar is. So, um, I'm just going to try and make a run for it. Hopefully, I can get on. No, that was like the worst place to run into. I did not mean to do that. Yeah, I was actually trying to uh, get onto like the sandstone area because when you're on the thicker like sandstone section, the uh, sand snakes cannot attack you, but did not make it in time. Not a big deal, though, because we already got our health back, so we are good to go. Let's just cross this bridge, and ta-da, there is the second gust jar. So let's just drag this into place, and once we do, uh, both turbines will spin, and that's going to cause a key to fall from the sky. So let's pick this up, and now we just gotta find a door to unlock this with, although we might have actually passed it already. In case we did, it's actually in the floor below us, so we do need to head back down there again. But I promise, guys, this will be the last time we go down here but um yeah the door that we need to unlock is pretty much right in front of us so let's just go down this sandstone path unlock this door and right behind it is something very very important so let's open up this chest and get ourselves the item from this temple which is bombs hooray now we can explode stuff up until our heart is content no more waiting for bomb flowers and um these will come in handy because if you guys remember there is a cracked wall right over here so let's grab our bombs and quickly blow this up that way we can see what's waiting for us 
on the other side. And yeah, now that we have bombs, a whole new set of puzzles have opened up to us. So, um, what we can do is we can take a bomb and throw it into these air currents. The air will actually push it up, allowing the bomb to explode, you know, anything that's sort of above it, which is pretty dang neat. So, we're going to be using bombs a lot from here on out, and we only have 10 of them, so break pots to make sure you sort of, like, keep a hefty supply. Anyways, let's toss a bomb up here and run all the way to the other side, because... Uh, once that bomb explodes, yeah, it's going to activate this switch, which will open this door. And this door only stays open for a limited amount of time. So make sure you're close by. And once you cross the gap, the timer stops. And now the door will stay open. Um, let's read this stone. Blank faces can hide truth as well as blemished ones. Study the walls carefully. All right, so basically what that means is that um, sometimes walls that don't have cracks can still be blown up. Like, for instance, this wall... There's a tile in front of it, so that sort of tells you that, yeah, if you lay a bomb there, it will explode and you can pass through to the other side. So, really just uh, pay attention to your surroundings, and uh, you should always be able to tell which walls can be blown up and which walls can't. Like, there will always be some sort of tell. It might not be a crack, it might be like a tile or a texture that looks different. You never actually know. Um... Yeah, the tile is actually on the other side of this wall, so just place the bomb there, and you'll be able to cross over to the other side. And now, guess what? We're back in the first room, which means we are very close to the boss key. In fact, it's right over there. So, to get to it, all we gotta do is take uh, two bombs very quickly, place them on these two tiles, and once they explode, they will activate the switches, opening this door, allowing us access to the boss key. So, we're pretty much done with this temple, like... Now that we got the boss key, all we gotta do is bring it to the boss door and go and fight the boss. And thankfully, the boss door is literally right over here. So let's just grab a bomb, throw it up that air current, and once it explodes, we're good to go. So there we go. We're done. I told you guys, this temple is very, very short. And I do like the fact that, like, we didn't really have to carry the boss key an obscene amount of distance. Like, it was literally right next to it. So, I do appreciate that about this temple. Anyways, let's just walk through these air currents, have it push us up. And as soon as we open this door, we're pretty much at the end. So, of course, we'll read this stone, step into the blue light to return to the temple's entrance. Okay, so there's our portal to get out of here. But, of course... We're not done yet. We got to take on the boss. So let's just get our resupply and head up these stairs. All right, so now sort of like the screen layout has changed. This is a very cool thing about this game. This is Cyclops Stir of Winds. We need to use both of the screens to fight this guy. Careful, that bloated beast can summon cyclones. Right, so you need to be careful for the wind. So he's on the top screen, right? What you want to do is uh, throw your bombs into the cyclones here on the bottom screen, which will send them up to the top screen. And if they hit this guy, they'll knock him down. And then you can sort of attack him with your sword. That's pretty much how you beat this guy. He's a very, very easy boss. All of the attacks are really easy to avoid. And um, hitting him takes no time at all. Now, the cyclones down here do change position. So you just sort of got to wait until he flies close to one of them. And, um, as long as he's close to one of them, the bomb that flies up should actually hit him. Anyways, let's wait for the next cyclone. Usually I like to wait towards, like, the edge of the screen. Um, you know, after you hit him, that way you can sort of, like, see where all the cyclones actually are. Alright, let's just hit him again. This guy does have a lot of HP, uh, so it takes a couple of times to kill him. Like, maybe four or five cycles? I don't really know. Can we hit him again? Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm not even giving this guy a chance. Holy crap. He is going down super easily. All right. Um, maybe one more cycle, and that should be it. So, please. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, baby. There we go. This could be it. And come on. Yes, there we go. Wow, that was really, really easy. Like, a lot easier than I expected it to be. So, all right. Well, there we go. We have done it. We have defeated the second boss, completing the second temple. And hey, there's more of that golden dust. But we know better now. That's no ordinary dust. Well, it's not really dust at all. In fact, it's actually sand for our phantom hourglass. So let's hold this up and get ourselves some more time so we can explore the Temple of the Ocean King even farther.
And there we go. Sweet. You got more sand for the Phantom Hourglass. Two minutes have been added. And hey, there's that symbol again. Which means that we have rescued another spirit. And of course, the spirit is another fairy. Yeah, everyone's favorite, right? Now we have like three of them with us. Oh boy! I'm Neri, the spirit of wisdom. Thank you for slaying that vile monster. Now the seal has been broken and I'm free! Look, Link! This time it's the spirit of wisdom, Neri. She literally just said that to me. Like, why do you need to repeat that? We came all this way to seek your help. The Ocean King must be locked up somewhere too. The spirit of power is with you. Of course I'll help. Alright, sweet. So it looks like Neri is going to join our group as well. And of course she did. Hooray! Now we got three fairies. Find one more spirit to track down the ghost ship. Alright. I am down with that. Anyways, now that we've beaten the boss, let's open up this chest and get ourselves another heart container. Fantastic. And now, let's just get the heck out of here, man. I am totally done with this place. Alright, so there we go. Now that the second temple has been completed, I think that's a good place to end off this episode. So if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.